Give my number to Rudolf Valentino. <laughs> Has he arrived as yet? No, uh, we had a while from him last night from Chicago. Well, isn't that fine then? Keeping in touch with your husband by wire. Does the man write a letter now and then? Oh, yes. As often as Papa used to write to you. As often as that. Well, aren't we the fortunate ones then? Whew. Wow, look at that! What do you suppose it must be like, California? Look at this! Ooh, well, they say it doesn't rain much. That's oh. a pretty one. Thanks. Wouldn't fancy that. Ooh. Like a bit of rain now and again. I suppose now and again you must miss the hurly-burly of the old days in the thick of it. A fella has his leg cut off. They say he feels his big toe itching every once in a while. I wanted to be president, Pat. I thought as much, though. You never come right out and say it. Always in the back of my mind. Sometimes in the front. You'd have had to turn Protestant. Discuss as much with the Archbishop, who advised me against it. I can't imagine why. Must have been prejudiced or something. <laughs> I suppose you'd have made a good enough president, Fitzy. Though I don't know how Father Flynn would have done his Secretary of State, do you? <laughs> no, port is left, Rosemary. Starboard right, port left. Starboard right, port left. Correct. So, we're going to push the tiller this way, the opposite way to the way we're going to come about. What's come about? To turn. Correct. Okay, here we go now, nice and easy. Coming about, Jack. Coming about. I can't say I share your enthusiasm for long train rides, Mr. Kennedy. I once took one of those experimental coast-to-coast -coast airplane flights. Take off and land, take off and land, up and down, up and down, all the way across the country. It was terrifying. Hey, hold it up there. Hold it on the set. Stick to trains, Jerry. Leave the flying to Lindbergh. What do you mean, what do I mean, no? No means no. I always know what I'm doing, darling. There's no need for you to hope I do. Well, of course I have. Well, if that should eventually prove to be the case, it won't be the first regret of my life. Surely not the last, I regret to say. What would life be without them? Dull, dull, dull. I treasure my regrets. With the exception of one or two, perhaps. Look, darling, I have an appointment in 20 minutes. I've got to ring off. It means hang up. It's a British expression. Of course I will. Absolutely. I promise. I've just refused a million dollar a year contract with Jesse Lasky. How brave of you, darling. I'm glad I've done it, but it's made me very tense. Oh, darling. What time is it? 20 minutes to 10. I have an appointment with DeMille at noon. I'm terribly tense, darling. Plenty of time. No. It's rather interesting. Now, the main message I hope you gentlemen of the press will carry forth to the rest of this industry and to the world at large 
is that FBO's policy will be one of producing photo plays for the entertainment of Main Street America and not for the uh, sophisticated taste of Broadway. We intend to eliminate any plots that depend for their popularity on sex appeal. All of FBO's movies will be uh, worthy of being witnessed by every member of the American family from 8 to 80. Melodrama is our meat, gentlemen, but high-class melodrama. I want to thank you all for coming today, and I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, would you care to define for us uh, what you consider to be high-class, Mr. Kennedy? Next question. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, what would you estimate is the average budget for future FBO productions? $50,000. Give or take a nickel or two. Yeah, what are your observations about the motion picture industry, Mr. Kennedy? Well, I'd say that it's one of the most exciting businesses in the world. I'd say it's certainly the most glamorous. And I'd say that the uh, great majority of people in the motion picture industry are vastly overpaid. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Add that gently now, lads. No less than the Queen of France has said they're taking her ease on it. Gently now. Gently. That's the ticket. Cover everything up well. It looks like rain out there. Oh, Papa. She'll be back, darling. Never you fear. The Fitzgeralds belong in Boston. I'm a Kennedy now, Papa. There's some that'll say so. <laughs> you said yourself you have a fine, stately house down there. And this riverside place is quite pleasant. Riverdale. Whatever. They'll be visiting. Plenty of them. Us to you and you to us. And sooner or later, Joe will see the error of his ways. And business or no business, back he'll come a lot of you. And that'll be that. Did I tell you Joe's hired a private railroad car to take us all down to New York tomorrow? You'll probably hire a brass band to greet you on the platform at the Grand Central Station as well. <laughs> Nonetheless, I doubt I'll ever forgive the Sumner gun for taking you away from Boston. That's that. sound. From now on to the public, the lousiest sound film is going to be better than the best silent. If you think Warner Brothers is going to let you have Vitaphone, you're getting too much steam. There's another system. RCA's developing it. It's called Photophone. Developing? Not yet perfected. The inside dope is it's going to be superior to Vitaphone. You think you ought to have a gab with David Sarnoff? <laughs> oh! <laughs> well done! Nice game, David. Cool since the last time. I got lucky. I, uh, I assume there's nothing about FBO's financial condition that you don't already know, do you? No. No cause for apprehension? I'd say not. Naturally, we're prepared to offer RCA a substantial interest in return for use of photophones, including all your technical personnel. And the patents? Present and future. What are you doing with all this large jazz, Joe? Well, trying to take over a string of theaters. That'd be our initial market for the system. Who are you looking at? Keith Albio Orpheum. They've got about 300 theaters. Enter Joe Kennedy. With a song in his heart and a truck full.